Welcome to my uh, very 70s boardroom wood paneled tabletop den. This is where I play Dungeons and Dragons late at night with my friends. And for me, this is sort of my sacred space, but I don't really know how to tell this without bringing you here. About four years ago, I had a tabletop experience that changed my life forever. I can't play a tabletop game without thinking about it. And it starts with my friend, John, who sits here. We really bonded over this game called Eldritch Horror. We played it routinely about once a month and we did that for about three or four years. One board game, it's not a role playing game, it's a board game. John taught me that it's all about atmosphere. When we'd go over to his house to play Eldritch Horror we'd be greeted by 1920s swing music and the table in front of us would be so beautifully decorated all in theme to the Eldritch God we were meant to be defeating that day. Sometimes John would greet us head to toe in thermal clothing and would say, John, it's 30 degrees outside. And he'd say, no, it's not. We're in the Antarctic today. And this isn't even the beginning before the game even started. Weeks earlier, John would send us an invitation to the game with a photo of the catastrophe about to unfold before us. An excerpt from the book based on the adventure we were about to play. And the very special thing that really defined so much of my life going onwards, he asked us all to bring an artifact, something you found in the drain, an odd hat, something lucky. And that, not only a brilliant icebreaker, it threw us into the game in good spirits before we got absolutely pummeled by that old god that day. <laughs> Eldritch Horror is a very hard game. When I found out I'd be dungeon mastering another game, I went out and I bought a whole bunch of lights because there's this distinct memory of playing a game of Eldritch Horror with John and we were fighting an old god, a giant worm that destroys cities and creates earthquakes. And I remember just being absolutely blown away when I walked through the door and there was a tarp hanging from the roof. The table that would normally game on was about 45 degrees out of place and there was floodlights around. And I just thought to myself, I might be the luckiest gamer on earth because <laughs> this is cool. <laughs> There was this one adventure that was set in the dreamlands, this weird surrealist sort of landscape. And we arrived and John had put a frozen fish in some jelly, which over time had slowly melted in the heat of the candles until it was all gone. But this just sad looking frozen fish. Anyway, that scenario was all about going mad. And I think in a way we did, even though we won. You know, I really enjoy crafting things, but other people participating in these games would go to dollar shops and find interesting items that were in themes for the games that we were playing. Some rubber snakes or an eye patch or an interesting statue. And if nothing else, the easiest thing you can add to your game is music. Some games you might need a bit of creativity to immerse people in them. But if you're playing a game like Warhammer, we did lots of campaigns and we would have maps and banners of different chaos factions. We would have coins. We had magical item cards, lots of tactile things. Elephant in the room, I'm making a giant mushroom right now for my book, Plants Nowhere to be Found, but also for a D&D session coming up as well. But don't tell my players that. And you know, when I first started making props, a lot of people were like, wow, I don't really know if I could get behind this. This is really left field of miscast stuff. But for me, it felt really normal because props have been such a massive part of my game experience for so long. And the thing is that if you can make terrain or you can convert miniatures or use milliput or foam, you can make props using the exact same techniques. All the skills are all applicable to each other. It just makes sense, right? <laughs> I don't really look like I make sense right now. Right, I have some mushrooms to make, but I'll see you next time. All right, bye.